added mass in roll motion. Say for example we have a cylinder in the water and here it is, the axis, it's in the water, say like this. Now if the cylinder starts rotating, you can imagine that the added mass would be almost equal to zero. The only thing you have is a small layer over here and there's some friction but no big deal. So in this situation there is not much of added mass. Second thing is if I have a vessel with a specific beam to draft ratio. So here's the vessel, it's the axis, and put it in the water. So here and we say this is your draft and here we have a beam and if we now have a beam to draft ratio which equals to oh have a look so I put another draft on here so beam to okay for drawing the cylinder so that would be beam to draft ratio say we have a cylinder over here it neatly fits in. So here in fact it says that your uh, beam is twice the depth well, which is the case in here. Then we almost have a cylinder with some more or less rectangular shapes over there and that will produce some added mass but uh, that's not a big deal. So also here you have a added mass almost equal to zero or uh, low. Then we have another case, um, a very wide vessel in the water and say we have a beam to draft ratio bigger than, oh, beam to draft, bigger than two. Yeah, in that case you can imagine that um, the cylinder will well, that was a nice cylinder. Well, cylinder is over here, and we have quite some areas over here which will produce the added mass, put, put the, the water in movement uh, if the vessel is rolling. Okay, so the added mass of a vessel rolling is dependent on the beam to draft ratio. Um, there's uh, an interesting graph which I sketch here very uh, generally. Say so here we have the beam to draft ratio, and vertically we have a um, the added mass divided by the mass itself. So we could say, well, here one, there we have a two. So in this point one, the added mass equals the mass itself. So we saw if we make one, two, three, four, something like that. We can see that the uh, added mass with a beam to draft ratio of 2 is quite low. Um, when we have another situation, this situation over here, I call it situation number 3, would be the, the right part over here. So we see that if the beam to draft rate is increasing, the graph will go, go up as well. So this situation over here, I didn't sketch. So we'll do that. If I have a of course, a little bit ridiculous. I have a very small vessel. Well, you could think of a sailing vessel with a keel. Um, and you have the water over here. And we have the cylinder over here. Something like that. If it starts rolling, well, you have quite some added mass sideways. So um, that part of the graph would go something like this. This is very generally, but you can see that um, you have to incorporate the added mass. So, um, have a look at the uh, radius of gyration. Say, normally we have a radius of gyration of um, 0 0.35 or 32 times 
um, the beam of the vessel. So in this case, you could say um, if I have a 20% added mass, what you could do is say, well, the radio of gyration is the beam of the vessel times, I have a 1.25 times the 0 0.32 squared, and that would give me something like a 0 0.4 of the beam. So, um, you have to add for the, uh, you have to compensate for the added mass for vessels with beam to draft ratios bigger than 2, and here beam to draft ratios uh, very uh, smaller than 2. And of course, if you have the added mass and you look at your roll period, which is equal to 2 pi, and then we have the radius of gyration divided by gravity times your gm. So if this, if your r is getting bigger, that means that your roll period is getting bigger as well. So yes, this is something you have to compensate for uh, if your beam to draft ratio is not something near 2. Okay, thanks for watching.